Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and recently on this channel, we've gone over a bunch of different videos, a bunch of different instances of squatting primarily in blue cities, although it needs to be made clear because a lot of you assume this is just a blue city thing, that this is actually happening in a lot of places, even places you wouldn't expect nationwide. And now I'm going to give you an update on a response to this whole situation, because previously we talked about these would-be vigilantes going to a New York property in order to get it back for a woman who ended up getting arrested trying to take back her own property that was left to her by her parents that passed away. But apparently, even though this didn't work in New York City, there's actually all these different various organizations, these squatter hunters, that are doing this. They're doing it successfully. And one of the most interesting things I've discovered about this is that despite what our left-wing friends will tell you about how these people are just poor, they're just Aladdin, they're just stealing people's property in these elaborate extortions, schemes that take advantage of tenants' rights that are completely out of hand in these blue cities. In reality, in actuality, these people are absolute scumbags. They know what they're doing, and they're deliberately trying to get away with it right under your nose while pretending to be the victims. And these guys expose that. Now, we're going to get into it, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I will be at the Minds Fest in Austin, Texas. Link to tickets in the top of the description. And promo code AJW will get you 20% off those tickets. Oh my God. The owners of these trashed homes all say squatters moved into their properties, caused mayhem, and refused to leave. So one of the things that people need to understand about these stories is this is not people desperately in need of shelter, moving into homes or apartments that are abandoned by some rich jerk or whatever, and just, you know, trying to make the best of a bad situation, due in large part because our society is controlled by greedy landlords and greedy capitalism. In fact, that was a legitimate comment that I had left under under one of my videos. Yeah, I'm not sorry to disabuse you of that world notion, but this is not the case. These people are scammers. This is an extortion scheme, and they're taking advantage of laws put in place allegedly to protect tenants, and if you're actually a legitimate tenant facing a landlord, these are the worst things humanly possible to occur in your cities because now we have to change the laws. We have to tilt it back in the direction of the landlords because essentially this is a no-cost perfect crime for these individuals and they are incentivized to do what we're seeing in this inside edition video and that is to destroy the home essentially in these places where they have short periods of time where you can establish squatters rights like new york it's just 30 days these people move in sometimes they create fake documents but that is not always included so the first thing i did was find a vacant house that somebody was trying to rent next i looked up how to break into a lockbox without using force thanks youtube Next, I forged some documents. This made it look like I had a lease agreement and I called the utility companies and had the utilities put in my name. I'm not gonna pay them, but they don't know that. When the owner showed up, I politely explained that this was my house now and they need to leave. So they call the police and I show them my lease agreement and the utility bills and they tell the owner that this is a civil matter and they've got to sue me. They end up hunkering down and then when the property owner shows up, realizes that these trespassers are there, they call the police. The police show up, they say, look, we can't throw them out, it would be an illegal eviction, you got to take them to eviction court, which in a lot of these places takes 14 months to over two years in order to do so. And during that period of time, the squatter is incentivized to live in the place, but not only that, to trash the place in order to get a cash settlement and because a lot of these places have granted the squatter a right to a free attorney they're able to fight and bog down the homeowner the property owner in court for the full length and period of time that it takes to go through an eviction and eventually this ends up resulting in a cash settlement to that individual so they end up with months of rent for free in these properties they end up being able to destroy the property without any criminal consequences and then they get paid in order to do so tens of thousands of dollars in many of these cases because it's just cheaper to pay them off and they never face prosecution and they just repeat the process in another home in fact there was a notorious 
notorious squatting couple in Texas that was a big problem about five years ago that did just that repeatedly until ultimately they ended up deciding to crack down. They ended up catching them before they were able to establish residency. And this is just because this has become such a lucrative scam that we're seeing so much more of it. An explosion of squatting cases is gripping the nation. In Atlanta alone, 1,200 homes are said to be illegally occupied. Inside Edition was there. A sheriff's deputies raided this woman's house outside Atlanta. 1,200 homes in Atlanta are currently being illegally occupied by squatters. And by the way, look at that home right there. This is not an apartment. This is not something that's abandoned. This is a well-maintained home, totally out of line with what the purpose and intent of squatters' rights should have been, what it was back in the day. This is clearly and obviously a theft. I mean, I made the joke on a previous video, but it is proving to be true. If you broke into somebody's home in Georgia, that's a felony burglary. Whether you take something or not, it's all about the intent to steal. But apparently, if you break into somebody's home and steal the home, then that's a civil issue. And anybody trying to force you out, they're an illegal evictor and they can be arrested on criminal charges. It's absolutely insane that this is going on. And again, these people are not trying to live minimally. I saw some people making the arguments that they try to do this more in working class areas or whatever. It actually works better in areas with slightly more money, especially if you can find a beach house or a vacation house, because if you have a 30 day time period and you break into this place before it's beach weather, guess what? They're not going to discover you well beyond the 30 days in order to get you out. In fact, we had a New York City situation that I'll probably make a separate video on where squatters allegedly murdered a woman who came three months after the death of her mother to clean out her Manhattan apartment, again, a wealthy area. And these people were living there. She confronted them and she ended up being stuffed into a duffel bag because these squatters are absolutely insane. They are criminals. They are thugs. And make no mistake about it, they do get violent. But one of the worst ones that I talked about was one that happened in Douglaston, Queens, New York, which is in New York City, nicer area, where these people moved into a home that elderly people bought to live in with their Down syndrome afflicted child. They bought it in the same neighborhood as their other child. So that way, when they pass away, the child can easily transition to the brother's custody and care. And this guy moved in. And not only is he trying to extort them for money, but he's also cranking up the AC, cranking up the heat, opening all the windows in order to generate for them $2,400 a month electric bills. So that prevents everything from going forward. Meanwhile, they've been paying all the bills. Leaving windows wide open. 24 hours, including thousands of dollars in utilities. And again, this is all a part of the extortion scheme because it's way cheaper to pay that guy $10,000, $20,000 than to pay $2,400 a month for the two plus years that it's going to take in order for you to get him out via eviction court. And again, free attorney for him. He doesn't have to pay any costs. He just gets to live largely in this nice home, in this neighborhood, deny this elderly couple what they actually paid for, what they saved up their whole life for, in order to give a better life for their children. And took into custody a man she says was a squatter. He had no intention of leaving. Once back in her home, she finds the alleged squatter's junk everywhere. Now, I want to make this 100% clear for everybody out there in the audience. People of all races get victimized by squatters of all races. This is not a thing where the people who are being victimized are maybe disproportionately in this category or that category. I've seen no evidence, no numbers to lead me to believe that's the case. However, right there, you can see that this is a black woman who owned this Atlanta home. This is what people are telling us that black people are capable of, what they are to strive for. They call this black X excellence and she got her home torn up by the squatter she has to clean out the junk of this person that she ended up having to deal with because the system is junk even though she probably worked a significant portion of her life in order to buy that home and she was taking care of it you looked at how beautiful it was on the outside i am certain it was not like this on the inside yet she's getting screwed over by this system in the city of atlanta by the way a largely black represented in terms of government 
government population center, and it's just not right. And again, these are the people that say that they advocate for black people, those people in government. You know who the district attorney is over there? Fonnie Willis, the one that's having this whole issue where she's prosecuting Trump, but she's corrupt, and she did this whole thing with Nathan Wade. We've done videos about that. I have to update that story, by the way, too. She's working on that while a black woman homeowner right here is having her property stolen and trashed, and she's going to have to fork over tens of thousands of dollars in order to deal with it. This is what's happening. These Democrats that are backing up these laws that won't change them despite years of information about how they're backfiring in all these different locations, they're not for you, and you could see that in their actions. A basic premise of the United States of America is that we should be able to protect property rights, and the idea that these people can just steal and trash your home, and that's a civil issue that's going to cost you even more money to fight in court, and then you're going to probably have to pay them, and that's considered all legal, is crazy in every possible way. In Riverside County, California, a woman fights to get inside the dream house that she and her husband had just bought. They say the previous owner refused to leave, citing COVID eviction protections. It took a 14-month legal battle before the new owners were finally allowed to claim their property. Again, I will emphasize, these people, these squatters, are not in any way, shape, or form victims of circumstances. They are not stealing homes in order to feed their starving family. And a perfect example of that is this guy right here. He sold the home to this couple. He took their money for this home and then refused to leave and then of course invoked the COVID protections against evictions the ones that we were told were absolutely necessary during the pandemic in order to keep them in court for 14 months after he had a contract that said he's going to take their money for this home and he refused to do it for 14 months he was booting them out this is what is going on across this country these people are gaming the system pure and simple a simple basic law-abiding person is not going to look up and know to a T every single law, every single manipulation, every single trapping in order to fight off an issue like this. This was pre-planned, premeditated, and executed against this couple. And let's be honest, he owes them money and he should be in jail. If you do this, that's fraud. If I sell you a home and then don't give you the home, I have defrauded you to the tune of probably multi-millions of dollars because we're talking about the state of California and there's should be some serious consequences for that. But instead, the state of California rewards that behavior. They say, you know what? You're going to do a property sale. You're going to sell this person the home. You're going to defraud them and then stay in the home and then try to abuse the COVID protections in order to do so. Again, at the peak of when home prices were surging. So this guy got a premium for that property. Well, guess what? Here's 14 months of living rent-free in this location while we review whether or not when you sell somebody something, you're allowed to keep it and the money that they paid you for that something. Well, we, we got to decide that in the state of California. We're not quite sure that's about how a transaction works. So let us break it down. Let us send it back to the judges, maybe send it to the appellate court so they can decide whether or not selling something means that the person who bought it actually owns it because that's really confusing. And again, these people paid for it. They get screwed over. And as we see, the people who don't pay for things, the people who steal things like all these thieves and looters and all that in California, no no consequences for them. It's absolutely everything being set up in order to cater to the criminal while damaging and punishing the law-abiding citizen for being an absolute sucker and following the law. In Beverly Hills, the realtor for this mansion says squatters have moved in, changed the locks, and turned this $4.5 million property into a raging party house. So I'm told by the left wing over and over again, listen, criminals of all stripes, innocent Aladdins, victims of the systems. Have we talked about the systemic structures yet? And in California, oh my God, think about the price of real estate in California. This house is $4.5 million. Uh, you know, interpretation, let's talk about Los Angeles crime and let's talk about crime rates in California. Hey, Jake, do you know how f***ing expensive it is to pay rent in California? Do you know how expensive it is to buy a house do you know how expensive it is to eat food do you know how expensive it is to put gas in your car so these people in order to make ends meet in order to feed their starving family had to take it over had to trash it had to leave the pool looking like seawater which by the way 
just disgusting to see. Absolutely nasty, and it's just justice, social justice, for the legitimate owners of this property to have to deal with this, and on top of that, still pay real estate taxes, and on top of that, still pay the electric bills, because a bunch of these places don't allow you to cut off utilities after somebody steals your home. So you are obligated to pay for this, even though these are not starving Aladdins just trying to make ends meet. These are people who seize this property as a mechanism in order to generate revenue on it, which by the way, if the legitimate homeowner tried to do that, people would be like, landlords, disgusting. But for some reason, these stupid, dopey, dork communists think that this is a part of the revolution. How can you say it's perfectly fine for somebody who can afford to live somewhere to steal a home from somebody else and then charge admission for all these crazy parties, trash the place like that's going to be perfectly fine? And here's a strange twist on the epidemic. A nationally prominent restaurateur, Adam Fleischman, who founded the umami burger restaurant chain in 2009 was recently accused of squatting at this Hollywood Hills home. Now I'm guessing that this celebrity chef is just another innocent angel Aladdin. Oh my God, his life is so hard going on shows like Hell's Kitchen, getting all this fame, having a successful restaurant. Now it was probably shut down during the COVID-19 pandemic, although he probably got an SBA loan. If I were to look that up, that might legitimately be the case, but very, very, very sad for us to look at this guy and he just just, he just had to steal this home from the widow like that that's just what he had to do and honestly we should all feel bad for the celebrity chef we should all have our hearts broken for the celebrity chef the the celebrity chef is the desperate person the innocent angel that needed to have this location because you know it's really hard out there for a celebrity chef. The owner, a 62-year-old widow, reached out to the one person she hoped could help, a self-taught expert on dealing with unwanted tenants. He calls himself the squatter hunter. Flash Shelton is the self-proclaimed squatter hunter. He says he's on a mission to take back properties after alleged squatters move in. Here he is confronting Fleischman. I understand you've been squatting at this residence? No. The confrontation continues inside the home where the squatter hunter turns the tables on the alleged squatter. I am taking over this property. I am leasing this property and I'm moving my crew in and put cameras up everywhere. Whatever you put up, no one's going to give Mm, okay. I've gotten bad publicity before. So first and foremost, the celebrity chef, the innocent angel celebrity chef, you know, the person who is famous for being a chef and has been on TV, he, he's talking about the real world problems that all you average Americans deal with about getting bad publicity before, you know, you know, he suffered from that. And secondly, in a previous video on this channel, I actually said what you should do rather than try to forcibly evict squatters is just squat on the squatters because presumably because these laws are so stupid, there's no reason why that shouldn't actually work. And apparently these guys do it on YouTube. I swear I never heard of them when I made that suggestion and, and it actually works. Our system is so stupid, so tilted against the landlords, against the property owners, that the only way to outgame a squatter is to squat on the squatter. Pretend like they're the landlord because when they're the landlord, then they lose all their rights because when you're the squatter, you get the God tier rights. I 100% was joking about this, but at least in the state of California where this occurred and wherever these guys are prominent, it's a legitimate thing. And again, I said, presumably, there's no reason why it wouldn't work in that other circumstance. And I was tongue in cheek about that. But I guess there's no reason why it wouldn't work. Just draw up a lease for another person. They'll squat on them. Apparently, just put up cameras everywhere. So you're observing this person. And then that that becomes an issue for them. And, and then they moved out in a week. The, the celebrity chef, the poor innocent angel who couldn't find anywhere to live because it's so hard for him out there being a celebrity chef moved out in a week. Fleischman denies being a squatter, claiming he had a right to live there, but moved out just a week later. So yeah, we're in an absolutely ridiculous situation with squatters' rights in the United States of America. And to be clear, it's not just liberal cities, even though the overwhelming majority of these cases are liberal cities and certain progressive policies like giving the tenants a free attorney regardless in order to fight back against the evil landlord end up fueling this, end up incentivizing this, and something needs to be done. Laws need to be changed, and we 
need to actually address this because right now in the United States of America, your property rights are one jerk coming by and saying I got a fake lease drawn up on crayon from being taken away. And that's not the way this country should be. But hey, you know what? Those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the absolute madness of squatters across this country and the vigilantes that fight them. Till next time.